again from Nigel's Modeling Bench and I'm back with part six already of this Russian 9K 37M1 Book air defense missile system and I'm just going to start by saying um, this is the 135th scale Stegosaurus series SS014 this product is for users aged above 14 only ready to assemble cement and paint not included this is not a toy so if you're watching this as a child thinking you're looking at a toy you're not it's a it's a scale model made for grown-up people to put together and to be honest as a grown-up person this kit is a struggle to build um, so yeah it's definitely definitely not a toy and not for young people to put together it is not a model made for children but I did notice in the instructions here which is something quite funny um, quite funny for the English to, to make fun of I guess I was looking here um, this product is a plastic model kit please use exclusive tools to assemble and paint read carefully and fully understand the instructions before commencing assembly a supervising adult should also read the instructions if a child assembles the model cut the accessories with the side cutters use plastic cement only stick the metal parts with the cyanacrylate glue here's the funny one painting should be finished during the assembly you need grind the colors before sticking the painted accessories what that's basically telling you is remove the paint before you stick the parts together so where are we um I'm waffling basically i left you last time i haven't touched it since other than doing a little bit of a little bit of sanding on the mr surfacer and stuff so here we are this is all done i added this bracket on the bottom that's all sanded now and blended in so we're going to put some xf27 around there and as i said what i'm going to do is paint around these doors and and make sure that they um we don't get any shadows looking through because when the doors go on what we don't want to do is look down in there and see tan colored plastic down in the gap behind so i'm um, going to get all that done spray around all these doors and then remove the paint from the flanges and then we'll, we'll glue the doors on i'm also going to paint the back of the doors and when i started looking at these i noticed lo and behold i know you're going to be shocked because this kit is you know not renowned for this or anything but we've got ejector pin marks in the back of these doors where they locate onto these edges and the ejector pin marks are flashy so best thing to do here I'm going to use this curved blade because it's best for the job I'm just going to come along and lightly rub over the edges of the ejector pins just to make sure they're not flashy where they're going to go on because if you've got a bit of flash there um, it will a stop the door going on properly and b the worst that you really don't want is the flash will be melted by the glue and then you may get an oozing of plastic sticking out from behind the door I've done that one so we need to go around and just make sure that these ejector pin marks aren't flashy as you can see on the backs of these doors I've numbered them so I know which is which which is always a good idea when you're taking parts off now here we've got a handle glued on and because of those massive holes, I, I just remember I went around with some super glue to fill in the holes because the, the again this kit seems to be following this theme all the way through. You've got like a you know a, a 0.5 millimeter pin that goes in a one millimeter hole, so you end up with a massive gap around it. So in fact, I'm going to use my um, matador here stick for here. This is the 400 grit from Infini. Loving these things. Um, got them from Premium Hobbies. You can see the sticker up there. And uh, yeah, loving these things. They're really, really good. Um, and you can see I've had them for a couple of months now. They've had a, a lot of use. And it says on the instruct on the instructions on the front cover that the grits will not come off. And sure enough, I mean, quick wipe of the jeans. They're almost like new again. I love them to bits. Really, really good. Best sanders I've ever had, to be honest. Best sanding sticks, anyway. So um, there we go. I'll just do the other one while we've got this stick in our hands we'll get rid of the get rid of that super glue off the back of there I'm not pushing down at all I'm letting the sanding stick do the work I don't want a good sanding with big trenches into it we can just get rid of that glue there which is going to affect the fit going on there we go that's them done and then I can go back to my knife and just scrape off these are also these doors they're they're on the sprues you can see here the sprue attachment is on the back face I don't know if you could just see that shiny area there so it's best to just get rid of that with a with a hard stick like so and that's gone 
I'm just going to make sure that these ejector pins or ejector pin marks aren't flashy. Getting there now is nearly the last one. And that's that. So there we go. So um, oh, one more there hiding. And that doesn't have any ejection pin marks on it, so we're we're good to go with that. So what we need to do now is look at getting this um this XF27 done. The other thing I want to do is put these um there's these looking at it again, I think they're probably um these things here. I think they're probably uh, plates that fold down for the operators to stand on for servicing or whatever, maybe for loading. Um, so they're going to have to be perhaps chipped up a little bit, but uh, we'll see. But I want to make sure that when I put them on, they're going to go on here. I want to make sure that I've painted this area here with the XF27 and I've also painted the front face. They're going to basically sit on like that. Okay. So I want to make sure I've painted the front face there and that face there so we don't have any of this bright tan plastic coming through. If the model was dark green, I probably wouldn't worry about it. So I'm just going to check the flow. I'm just going to get some green on here. And this is basically Tamiya XF27. Slightly thin, just very slightly, probably 20% thinner. And about 18 PSI. I'm just getting in around all the nooks and crannies. Just to make sure. It's almost like pre-shading this. I just want to make sure we don't have any of that right town plastic showing through at the end of the day. Lockage, I think. Making sure we cover all the angles, like so. In around the back of these doors now. You might want to fast forward this bit. I do know that some of my followers like to see airbrushing. So we'll leave the camera on. on these doors right we've got to do the same in here All I'm doing is basically putting this green 
anywhere where there's a risk of the bright tan plastic showing through. And hopefully here I can show you exactly what I mean. Let's just say we're painting this model now and the doors are fitted, okay? So I come along here and I spray in there and I change to this angle and I change to this angle but I can't get in from that angle and look you've got a bright tan plastic shadow in there so you do it before the doors are on and then you know you're not going to get it I've seen quite a lot of models, there we see there's another example of it there you can see it here, you look at it from that angle it's absolutely fine but look under there so basically if you miss that when you see the model under a bright light at a show or in a photograph it will stick out like a sore thumb I've seen quite a few for instance cockpits cockpits done where the person's modelled it and it looks bloody lovely really really good job and then under the bright lights of a flash on a camera or whatever you can see resin colour coming through and I've seen it on quite a few builds on forums in my time and uh, yeah it's always bloody annoying if it's you especially when everybody comes on there and says I can see plastic coming through there yeah thanks for that <laughs> I'm just going to put some of this XF27 around these plugs and sockets because I want to make sure if you remember there's a lot of Mr. Surfacer in this top face where that awful join was and you can see now that join is showing through where the Mr. Surfacer is sunk and the same there so I'm going to have to do them again you know it's always worth doing stuff like this find it now rather than find it later okay so that's all around the doors done okay just gonna have a quick check over make sure we haven't missed any edges there we go let you see I've missed a bit in there we'll go in from there And also, it's, it's so easy to do this now. Let's check that seam. It's so easy to do this now rather than when you've got the whole thing built up and you're trying to put camouflage on and stuff. You can see there's a bit of a seam showing through there. Again, just get in here, get all the angles, make sure just to double check there's no white plastic showing through and there we go so that's that bit done okay, let's have a look at the back of these doors this should be quite easy to do I'm going to come along in fact I'll put a piece of paper towel down to protect my my board There we go. Easy as that. In fact, it might be easier to just lay these down on here and just go around them like this. And I'm out of paint, so there's a perfect opportunity to stop, and I'll come back when they're done. Right, I've got most of this all done now, and uh, just using up the paint in the gun really. So, um, got the uh, got the loading mechanism there, gone round that, and made sure sort of everything's 
green and as you can see here straight away if you look down in there you can see tan plastic showing through so I'm just going to get in there and this is exactly why I do this because there are so many nooks and crannies and different angles and believe me when you look at it in flash photography it really does show out it will really look out like like that it is as bold as that is now I just want to show you quickly why I'm doing this because some of the newer modelers out there some of the even maybe more experienced models but thinking, why the hell are you doing this what is the point and basically it's a lot of people call it pre-shading um, it is pre-shading but I'm not doing it for pre-shading I'm doing it to annihilate the tan plastic so I'm going to show you exactly why now imagine this is glued onto there because this fits on there okay so I'd have a wall basically here okay there'd be a wall there where my where my arm is there's a wall so I can't get in on that angle there so the only thing I can do is spray it like this okay so I'm just going to basically spray this like this so I've got my model all built up okay and it's all looking lovely all right and I put my weathering on and I, I, and I do everything and it's all finished and it's beautiful and then it goes under a spotlight that shows that way so you can see when you look at it like that it looks fine I mean I got a little bit of shadowing there you can see so I just go over it again because I can see some of the, the tan plastic coming through so I'll change my angles here there we go and it looks great until you do that and you can see then you've got all that tan plastic showing through I'm just going to stand up make sure you can see what I'm talking about there we go you've got that there that's how it looks and then when you tip it in the light there we go all that nice nice bright tan plastic showing through so then you come in on the angle like this and you do all that and it looks great yeah until you do that and you can see down in behind those doors this tan plastic and I've run out of paint so I'm gonna have to stop there which is a shame because I just want to get in those little areas just put a tiny drop of paint in the brush let's try it neat see how it comes out neat should be fine for this but as you can see I'm coming on this angle now on that angle there on that angle there and then like that all over the place just do the same here getting all the nooks and crannies all around that door all around the hinges just like so as you can see there's so many little nooks and crannies in those hinges there Make sure they haven't got any and I'm out of paint again so but there we go I just wanted to make sure I got those doors done and now you can see that whatever angle I come in on there's no tan plastic showing through at all okay and that's why I do this it's just to make sure that I don't have any tan plastic showing through I can come over now the Russian green black light gray whatever it is and all that's going to show through is this XF27 which is going to look great because it's not as garish as being black and bang in your face but it's also it's a it's a very very dark green so it's a bit softer than black but it will also give you that depth of that shadowing effect bit of depth so there we are so we'll let all this dry now which is pretty much all dry and then we'll um, get the door stuck on and that will be the launching area turret wherever you want to call it that'll be it pretty much done I've done the back of these doors again all the angles come in from the four different angles just to make sure the paint goes up inside those um those little pressings there so there we go right we're back 24 hours later um and the paint's all dry and everything you don't need to leave it 24 hours I just have because after I shot the last little bit I went and did some work on the Land Rover which explains my um, horrible disgustingly bitten dirty nails and I've also got there a black man's pinch which is what we used to call a black man's pinch but it's no longer politically correct so I don't know what we call it um, yeah let's not go down that road um, 
all I know is I don't know of a single black man that would be offended by me calling that a black man's pinch. I think it's the people that think they'll be offended, but never mind. Let's not get down that road, as I say. So what we need to do now is glue these doors on. And as you can see, I've laid them out in the order they need to go on. OK, so you've got that side there and then that side there um, at the top. So we've got the longer door there and we've got the two shorter doors here. And obviously we've got the points where the hinges are that, um, that dictate which way around the doors go. So, yeah, I've got them the right way around. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to worry about removing the paint on the back of these. But I am going to remove the paint from these edges because these glue, these glue straight down. And I've had a good hard think about how I'm going to do this. So I've got an old sanding stick. This is an old, very old one. It's for doing nails. Um, but I'm not going to worry about clogging up because generally paint will clog your sanding sticks up. So you want to be a little bit careful about what you're using. So we'll just go gently. I'll use a knife, I think, on the adjacent to the hinges. Let's just get that off of there. And then the same round here. Oh, I've had um, a, an email uh, from a guy, from Peter, thank you, uh, requesting my PayPal details. And I want to thank him for sending me that mail because um, it made me realise that I have not actually been putting the um, attachment on the end of the videos about how you can um, donate. If you'd like to donate a couple of pounds to the channel just to add to the pot for buying equipment and stuff, then um, I will be most grateful. So uh, yeah, those that link's on there now. On, on all of my um, Land Rover build videos. I also must do a um, an update for you so you can see where we are and I can uh, all those that have pledged and donated I can give them a shout out. And also something else I've done I have started another channel which I did mention over on my Land Rover build and it's actually called Nigel's Land Rover Channel. And what I'm, the reason I've done that is the, the Hobby Boss Land Rover got a lot of interest, as did the Revell 24 scale review I did. So, and as you know, I've also been doing some work on my Land Rover because it's a 2011 TDCI. And let's just say the paint on this model is probably thicker than the paint they've used on all of the brackets and the chassis and everything on that thing. So, uh, yeah, it's basically starting to rust away. So um, it needs some remedial work, uh, which I'm doing. But the any of you that will know Land Rovers know that in 2007, which is when I think Ford took over, they changed the design of the Land Rover and gave it a, 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 the Defender and gave it an uplift with a new engine, new gearbox. They replaced the bulkhead, which didn't have the opening van, uh, veins. Uh, they replaced the dashboard, much better dashboard, sort of 100% I think improvement on the heater or 300% improvement or something, it was ridiculous. The heater is amazing now. Um, basically loads of changes. So as you can imagine, when they did that, the build quality went down the, down the tunnel um, and also the actual take apart ability. You know, a Land Rover used to be take apartable by a, you know, a, a complete novice. Well, now you, you, you've got to have a science degree to work out how it comes apart. And the manual is absolutely useless. So uh, I thought I'd start a new channel, put some videos up about how it all comes apart. And um, seems to be getting a lot of interest, 41 subscribers in, the, in a week. So I'm quite chuffed with that. Uh, but I talk about models on there as well. So if you want to go and have a look and subscribe, then um, I will be most grateful. So let's get these doors on. I've had a good hard think about how I'm going to do this. And the first door I'm going to put on is this one. So I think the neatest way to do this is going to be to take some extra thin and a long brush and apply the glue from behind and then let it capillary round. A couple of things on glue. Um, when I first reviewed these premium hobbies glue stands, there's one there, there's one there. Uh, that's the single, that's the treble, obviously. Um, I was asked the question, does the extra thin attack it? Well, I've had this, what now, a month, six weeks, is it? And basically you can see it leaves white marks on it. 
Now I'm not sure if that's the dust because I've got sanding dust everywhere or if it is actually the glue that's staining it but it does seem to just wipe off. So the glue does leave some white marks on it as you can see there okay but it doesn't seem to attack it at all. Um, now the single one I haven't used so that's all good. Now this one here the single I've got in here another question I've been asked this week a long time ago, probably six, eight months ago, somebody did a review, I think it was Brett, did a review on over on high altitude scale modeling, did a review on a, uh, a Mr. Hobby cement that had a dye in it, so it was black, so you could see where it was flowing, which I thought was a really handy idea. If you're doing something like these, um, like these missiles, and you've got the long seam, I picked the one that's sanded, if you've got the long seam down there, you can see when you're putting the glue in actually where it's going and you know then you're not going to get any dry joints whereas with the clear stuff obviously you, you can't really see where it's going so I thought I'd put some Tamiya XF1 in some um, Tamiya Extra Thin and I got a couple of people followed on and copied me and did the same thing on their channel um, I'm not sure that it works I think the paint kind of separates out uh, you can see on there it's a bit sort of blobby and you can see here we've got like deposits around the rim and I think the paint is kind of separating out from the glue. Now that is literally a couple of drops. I think what I do when, when this bottle of extra thing gets down near the bottom I think what I'll do is I'll try a drop of enamel in there or maybe even some ink. Um, I've got some Windsor & Newton Indian ink here. So we will keep going because the, the beauty of it is you can see where the glue is going. Now when you're gluing stuff together I don't know like gluing these pivots into here it doesn't really matter if the glue's in there or not you know it, it's, a, it's a pin and a pad but when you've got these long seams like you have done these here it would be good to see where the glue is actually going so I'm going to use that now so I could try and show you what I mean and the whole purpose of having a dyed glue now my objective here is to glue these doors in without actually having to go in from the front so I'm going to use a long paintbrush Okay, and we've got some extra thin on there and we can see it's, you can see when I put it on here, you can see it leaves a, a dark colour behind. So I'm going to go in from behind here and I'm just going to brush some into the joint where that door goes. Now we probably won't see much on here on camera because it's way, way down in behind. So that's that one on and that is properly glued already. So what I'm going to do now is put this larger one on here so that one's going to go on like that and then I can take this glue and actually yeah uh, this this is this exercise isn't going to work because of the the paint that's on the back of the doors won't allow me to um when we allow me to see where the actual glue is going but there we go so now I'm going to come back to this side, put this one on here, just a drop in each corner. I'm just trying to just take it off just to make sure that it has actually glued down. And then I'm going to put this one here on next. So you can see with the paint in it, it still works, it's absolutely fine. Um, because there's such a small amount of paint in there, as we all know, Tamiya Extra Thin will burn through um, Tamiya paint anyway. So, you know, like I've got the paint on the back of the doors here, I'm not rubbing that off. And we can see there it's all gone round that door. Right now, it might be easier to show you what's going on with these bigger doors. So I am going to take this door here, which, one, which side am I looking at? This door here, just press that into place. Now you may see this working on this door because it's bigger. Now 
no you can't you can't see it going round because of the paint that's on there I will show you on some other parts and then let's take this door here We can go in from the from the side here, and as you can see, this is making life really easy for getting a nice, clean, glueless joint on these doors. Let's put the brush down, and now this one's going to go on here like so. They just clip into place. They're a lovely fit. Which is uh, nice to see for this model because we haven't seen many lovely fits on this one, have we? There we go. That's in there. All good. Now this last one obviously is going to be a bit of a struggle, but I can get in from the from the turret hole or the turret ring, should I say? So hold that in place and then just put some of the glue in there, let it go round. And there we go, as you can see, all glued in nice and solid. Just put some more in there, give it an extra, you don't want them falling off do we? And there we go. So those glue, those doors are all glued in now without any mess or problems or glue oozing out anywhere and they're all nice and solid. Right, because I failed in my attempt to show you how this dyed glue works, I'm just going to show you on this, um, I just tried to find something I can glue two halves together and I can't really find anything because I've done all the sub-assemblies on the Land Rovers now. So um, if you haven't seen my Land Rover builds, Here's the um, here's the short wheelbase conversion. Just plot the bulkhead. As you can see, we turned the long wheelbase into a short wheelbase, and uh, yeah, lots and lots of work, but lots and lots of fun. And um, go and have a look. I think you'll really enjoy it, and hopefully, it'll inspire you to have a go. But anyway, um, these wheels don't actually fit together that well. I've just noticed there's a little bit of flash on there, so that might be why. Um, there we go, fit together lovely now. So I thought I'd do this just to show you the, the whole idea. Now with some of this it doesn't really matter but it's more for sort of long fuselage halves and stuff like that. But with the dye and the glue you can actually see where it's going. So if I put this in here you can see the dark line that's being made by the glue There we go. Now you can see the glue has gone all the way around. Just put some more there. Okay. So now you, you know that the glue has gone all the way along that joint. Whereas if you just use clear glue, you never really know. And, and as we all know, sometimes with fuselage halves and stuff, like I said, with these long missiles, you sand it and you end up with a white line. And that means the glue hasn't gone all the way down which is why I use another technique, which I, I, I've showed you in other builds. I've got something long going together. I stick a cocktail stick in one end so that it holds it apart. And then what you can do is hold the, hold the two halves together. And as soon as you take finger pressure off, they just spring apart. So you're always putting the glue into a gap and then you know it's running down into the joint and it's not just sitting on the surface. Um, if I can explain it, if you can imagine this is a fuselage half here this face and obviously it goes around like in a, in a C shape and this is the other side when they're hard together you come along and you put the glue in this joint here it may only go down a couple of millimeters in this case it may only go down a few thou on your model it may only go into the gym and joint slightly but if you have a gap the capillary action will pull the glue all the way through okay so that's what I'm talking about if you understand me using this so um there we go, that's the that's the whole idea of having the dyed glue. Okay, and you can see there, it's gone off. Okay, so there we go. Um, this is basically 
the complete uh, launch turret, if you like, launch system all um, all mocked up. That keeps wanting to angle back, and I keep straightening it up. Um, and that is basically it. Now it's all just sort of clipped together at the moment. You've got this this thing on here, which is some sort of radar seeking seeking device. That I'm guessing. Um, uh, and that just basically pops in on a poly cap. These railings on the side here, I've assembled them. For some reason, my, one of mine was all destroyed, like it came out of the mould too quickly or something. So, sort of straighten that out, but it wouldn't have been perfectly straight anyway it's after it's hit a few trees and branches down. So, basically, uh, they just go in the sides like that. And I will glue them on just before paint because I don't want to start, you know, I've got to fit the missiles and everything. and um, looking at it they don't fit particularly well so I need to uh, sort that out so I'll, they'll, they'll get knocked off this antenna I haven't clipped on for I mean you know just clips over there. there's two pins on here and that clips on there I don't want to clip it on in case I can't get it off again so um, that's just going to sit on there now I haven't got any poly caps in there and I've got no pivot here on this side but basically you get an idea how it works and you can see this antenna mount sits there and then as it goes up it all sort of pivots and you can see it stays where it's supposed to be and um yeah really really pleased with that you can see my metal rod in there which looks so much better than a silver painted piece of plastic and i've just dropped a railing on the floor and i'll take that one off before that one falls off so yeah i'm really pleased with how it's come out um i haven't put the railings on here there's some railings here still on the sprue that kind of sit here on both sides i haven't put them on for the same reason as the others i don't want to knock them off and um and that is basically that and that piece there it keeps angling back so that is our launch mechanism basically finished and you can see here that mechanism there that goes like that when you lift it all up so yeah really really chuffed with how this has come out so just to show you how it all comes apart in case you want to do the same as me that will basically pull out of there be careful with it because you don't want it to suddenly spring out and snap okay so that comes out of there like so and then you can just push these apart and get that out of there so that's that out then this here you can't do it when it's vertical you have to do it when it's horizontal will just lift up on that side slide across like so and then just pull that out of there and then there's a brass pin in there that I've got this steel rod on that I can pull out afterwards so um that's it and obviously that's on a poly cap so that just pops out and then once again you can see this bloody thing here is angled back and it's supposed to be vertical so I'll leave that there that's going to get snapped off I know it is I don't really know why I glued it on never mind um and as you can see I put these tread plate things on the back here they're on and you can see now why I painted the inside of them first so there we go guys that is the launch tower launch turret whatever bit finished and just to give you an idea of how big this thing's gonna be I'll just get a bit of blue tack second we'll just stick that on there like so and then I can put that on there and we can see that that is quite a large model that's uh what's that that's nearly 240 millimeters long so quite a big model so um as i said just now that's the turret bit pretty much done um a couple of little tiny detail parts like these railings and stuff have to go on as i say but uh that's that so let's get this cleared away now and let's start looking at this upper hull okay i lied sorry I said I was going to get on with the upper hull, but I then remembered I haven't done this section here yet. And we've got all these little hooks and stuff on the front. So I've got these off the sprue. And as you can see here, what they're telling us to do is assemble this eye for the end of the chain. Hook that over one of these little hooks on the front before we glue it on. So you can see this one. So this will be the, what's that? The, um, that's the left hand one has got the, the hook in it. So we'll do that in a second. First, I just want to discuss these these parts A28. These little, I think they're um, steps for the for the operators to climb in. Um, part A28. They come on the sprue attached here. So my advice to you is take them off with this ejector pin tab still in, 
and then you can come along with a hard sanding stick and just sand away your sprue nib like so these things are great for that sort of job um, and then afterwards you can go around with a soft stick and just remove the the mold seam okay then you can come along with your nippers and cut off the the little ejector pin tab thing as close as you can to the actual um, to the actual part and then we can just lightly grip this and go around the inside and clean up where that was and then just give it a very gentle scrape with the knife to remove the seam just like so Okay, and now if I can get a stick in there, yes, I can get a stick in In fact, I'll get this matador stick in there. We can just sand away those sprue nibs like so. So, rinse and repeat. Just like that. And then the same on that one. And then just take the mould seam out of the out of the base if you like. And then afterwards we'll go around with some extra thin and I'll just make sure. Because what we want is to look like a piece of tube in this bed, not like two pieces of plastic mould halves to, together. So we've got those there, so they are basically gonna go into these little recesses here so it's the two the lower two that are closer together so what I'm going to do I'm not going to use the quick setting because it dries too fast it's going to put a drop in there and a drop in there like so and then come along with this and put that step in there that's it same on the other side drop in there drop in there And then just to make sure they're, they're welded in nice and solid, just go around them with the glue. Just put a drop more in there. And then make sure they're vertical. And there we go, that's them in, like so. Then we've got these little hooks that go in. I'll put this one in first. So this side doesn't have the, the eyelet on it. So that's just going to sit in there like that. Now I'm going to make sure, yeah, on the back here there's a mould seam. And that mould seam is holding the, whoops, I've just snapped that, clever boy. That mould seam is holding the part away, away from the hole. So just remove that mould seam, just to make sure you get a better, flatter fit. So it goes up against the hull a bit flatter. There we go. And that bit that I snapped is, oh, it's just, again, you see, this is what this kit is covered in, and it's really getting on my nerves. You've got a, a tab there, which is probably about 0.2 millimeters narrower than the actual slot it goes into. So it fits again. I use that phrase like a prick in a top hat. Give that a squeeze down. If the glue is out, it doesn't matter because it's probably welded anyway. And now that they've started to go off, what we'll do is we'll go around them with some extra thin, like so. And that removes any rough marks from sanding, scraping, or any hairiness or anything. So that's that done. So I'll try and do this one without snapping it. go so we can put the hook over like that and I'm just going to put some glue in that hole just 
just to give it something to bite on so it doesn't just fall off again. There we go, and now with the with the eyelet at the bottom we can put some glue around the around the upper area. And then we can come along now. And put some glue in there. And there we go, make sure the eyelet's free, just give it a shake. And there we go, that's in like that. And then what I'm going to do now is just run over there with some extra thin. Just to make sure we don't have a seam line there. Nothing that's worse when you start washing and dry brushing your models and you've got seam lines everywhere. So that's that section completed now. I did actually put these little uh, mud guards on just before I came on camera. Uh, they're a very tight fit and there's also some very large ejector pin marks on the inside faces of them which you need to sand off. So I'm just going to run over some extra thin there, just get rid of the sanding marks. And uh, yeah, there's some deeper texture pin marks, not deep, but they're large, I just sand them away. And they're like a rubber, going to be a rubber vinyl sort of material there, so they're all flexible. So that's the lower hull, basically complete. Um, now, as you know, we've already done the wheels. These parts here, C11 and C10, these are the mud scrapers that scrape the mud out of the, out of the sprocket. They sort of sit in and, and scrape the mud away from here. Um, don't fit them in yet or you won't be able to get your sprockets on. So now we can actually look at the upper hull here. Okay, so I've got the uh, upper hull out of its bag. It needs quite a bit of clean up. Um, there's quite a lot of flash on it. There's flash all around this corner here on mine. There was flash all around this corner here. Flash all in here. And I also need to take out that sprue tab there and we'll just get a knife and clean that up. Need a new blade I think. Come with my hard stick No, I'll just take that off. I'm not putting any pressure on, just letting the stick do the work. This is a 400 grit Matador from Infini. So there we go, that's all the, that's that off. So what we're going to do now is look at options now this is where we really need to make our mind up which one we're going to do now we've got the options in the kit we've got a which is the um air defense army russian air force pushkin city russia 2007 we've got this one here which is the ukrainian army um 25th independence day 2016 and then we've got the finnish finnish army northern suburbs of helsinki 2004 so it's A, B and C. Um, I'm not going to do the Finnish one because I want it to be Russian. It's a Russian missile system. Um, the Ukrainian one looks great with all this digital camo and it would be a great way of trying out my new um, Infini cutting mats. These things, if you haven't seen these before, I've done a review, go and have a look. Absolutely brilliant and would be great for doing that sort of thing. Um, but I don't want to do that because it's a parade day. It's going to be all clean and shiny and everything. I don't want that. I want it to be, I want mine to be a bit dusty and a bit weathered. So I'm going to go for option A, which I really do like the um, tricolor camouflage. Um, I actually have these AK colors, the, the, the um, main colors. So um, let's just show you those a second. Okay, I thought I had these colors. Um, I clearly don't. So I'll have to use these instead. These are the Real Colours AK. Absolutely love these paints. Probably my favourite paint out there um, at the moment. They're bloody awesome. Um, these main colour paints, they're actually AK. I'm not a big fan of these bottled paints. I bought them at a show. It was in a set like that, the, the six paints in a set. 
Now, I don't know what they're trying to do here, but we've got light grass green, blue black, and the greyish yellow, which are the three colours for that. Now, the only one they're calling out for is 235. Now, blue black, okay, in the instructions, they don't want you to use blue black, they want you to use 217, sorry, this is Russian green, they want you to use 210, which is black grey. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that's going to be the right colour for that. Um, 217, can't quite see what they're calling for on that one, but hey. Uh, so they've got four colours here, but there's only three colours on there. So, not quite sure what's going on there. Um, unless they're saying these wheels are that colour, I don't know. But anyway, as far as I'm concerned, that's the colours there. I'll use these. Russian modern green, Russian greyish yellow. Um, and then you've got this black 6RP, which is the, the right colour. And you've got Russian grey green there as well. So I'm not sure which is the one. I'm guessing it's those three there you'd use, not, not those three there. So uh, that's what I'll use for that. Okay, so we've decided on version A, as you know. And basically, so what it's telling me, I need to remove this step or whatever it is here. I need to remove that for version A. And if we're doing version C, we'd have to remove this little lug here, I believe that's pointing to, this lug here, and then fill the hole. So if you're doing version C, put some sprue in there or some stretch sprue or whatever, or a bit of plastic, fill that hole in, cut it off, and then just sand it, it'd be nice and, nice and flat. If you fill it first, then you can do all the sanding and blending together. Um, so version A requires that to be removed. So I've got fresh blades my knives okay so we'll have a good stab at that and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my Tamiya side cutters to remove as much of the raised detail as I can and then what we can do is come along with this blade and just gently shave away and if we can avoid cutting into the actual hole side itself That'll save us having to worry about fillers and blending it and stuff. Okay, so this isn't the easiest of jobs. Just come in from this way and get rid of that latch. The beauty of these round blades is they won't leave any sharp cut lines. If you use the if you use this sort of blade here there's always a chance the tip will dig in and it'll sort of leave a, a sharp line behind whereas with this you're always cutting with the radius so it's more like kind of scraping it than anything else so you can just gently scrape that away there of course the other way to do this if you wanted to is just cut that section out and put a piece of plastic card in um, but then you've got to wait for the glue to dry and everything. If you keep the blade clean, you can see what you're doing. There we go. And this is the, um, you be careful not to cut yourself. I've almost cut myself there. When you do this, um, it's good to just take a tiny bit at a time. Don't try and do it all at once. Don't go tearing into it. And as I say, keep that blade clean and then you can see what you're doing. Yes, I have cut myself. You can see a tiny bit of blood on my thumb there. Now we can just gently scrape. Is 
So keep the blade clean so you can see what you're doing. There we go. And then if you want to, you can do my old favourite trick. Come along with a, a marker. Just go over the area like that. And then I'm going to take a, a florey skinny stick because it will get in between. I can't get that matador in between the, the two there. So and then I'm going to very gently sand away, making sure I keep the stick nice and flat to the surface. You don't want to start going like this and taking off that corner. And you also need to be careful to avoid um, sanding away those little sills. They're little uh, rain rain protectors, aren't they, for the um, little gutters to stop water running down in behind the in behind the doors. So again, just like the turret, we've got a million doors on this thing. As you can see, having that black pen on there has given me a guide. You can see the shape of the, the original plastic part there. Right, so that's removed. Now, as you can see, it's all sanded nice and flat as if it was never there. So, um, happy with that. Uh, that obviously stays because we're doing version A. Now, again, you can see here, I'm seeing bits of flash. There's flash on the inside as well. So, yeah, be careful of these bits of flash because they may well affect your, uh, your build. And on that subject, if we look this part here, on the back of here, that, that's part uh, B21, that's the engine grill there. And in there, that's going to go flat on there. And this is all covered in flashy ejector pins. So they need to be all, you know, sanded off. Make sure they're nice and smooth and flat. And you've got no ridges sticking up that are going to affect the fit. Because um, you want that to be a nice fit in there, like so. Careful not to break that little piece off there. That's, that's like a grab handle or something there. So um, that's going to fit in there lovely. Then we've got um, these little parts here, which are going to one. We've got the axe there, which is all the, I've done all the seam removal on that. Just go over it again, just to make sure. Like I say, you do not want seams on your model. When you do your washes and stuff, they'll stick out like a sore thumb. So here we can see this panel here, B15, this goes down and sits in there like so but we can see there we've got this massive ejector pin that's actually called a z-pin that's sticking out there so we'll get rid of that and then we'll um, shave away the the excess that's left there and I just want to make sure the rest of it is flat and there's no raised sticking up bits that's going to affect the the fit. So there we go. So now we've got to glue on this part here, which is a little door. And all I'm going to do there is put a little drop of cement in the hinges just to hold that in place. Now I've gone to put some on the side as well. There we go. So that's held in place there. And then we've got this axe that goes on. That's going to sit in those holes, which it doesn't actually fit. So I'm just going to use the tip of my knife and just open these holes up very slightly. That way it'll fit in there. And then a drop of glue on the back. 
just to hold that in place. And I know a lot of you thinking, why don't you paint the tools first before you fit them? The reason for that is, as you can see there, you've got the pins and everything. I'd rather just paint it and then I can do the detail work afterwards rather than have or risk having bits of tan plastic showing through. So and now what I'm going to do is just run some extra thin along this edge where I've sanded it just to make sure we've got that nice round wooden hand look to it. And then that's going to go down in here but we've got this part here C68 going in which is tiny and I want to put that in first. That's just going to sit in there and lo and behold it doesn't fit. It does fit with a pretty hard push and then put some glue on the back of that. And then what I'm going to do is just brush over this front a few times because I had a hell of a mold seam on this part. It took quite a bit of cleaning up so I just want to make sure that keeps its round shape. And then this panel here is just going to slot in like so and fit in like that. Now whether there's supposed to be a step there or not I do not know. I don't think there probably would be. So what I'm going to do is push this up from behind and then I'm going to use a straight edge and just push it into position to make the filling work a lot easier. Now that's locked in place. And I think I will see if I can find any reference material that shows this area, but I don't think we're supposed to have a join here. I think that's supposed to be a smooth, smooth flush fit with the top. So um, I'll check my references and I'll let you know. But if that is supposed to be smooth, I'll put some Mr. Surfacer in and we'll sand it and get rid of that join. Although when the turret goes on, you're not going to see much of it. But um, as far as I'm concerned, it's not what you can see, it's what you know is there. There we go. That's nice and flush. And then we can just put some glue in these tabs at the bottom. It's really sucking that up. Okay, then we've got this little part here, C5, some kind of handle or pivot or something. That's going to go on like so. And that one actually fits, and my thumb is still bleeding by the look of it. Sorry. Disgusting. At least you know I'm real. I'm not a bot. A drop in there. And then a drop in. Whoops, too much. Drop in there. And that'll hold that down. And then once again, because it's round and I've got a seam, I'm going to go along the edge with me extra thin. And then finally this part here is going to get glued into this side like so. And as you can see once you take all those ejector pin marks and stuff out you get a lovely fit on there. 
fact, I think what I'll do with this part is use my Mr. Cement Deluxe, which is a slightly thicker glue. We can get that on there and then just drop this in. That's that. I'll put some extra thin on the bottom. And just to reactivate that glue, we'll put some extra thin in there, and that will get that stuff going again. The uh, the Mr. Hobby stuff I'm referring to. And then I'm just going to put a drop on that handle there. And there we are. So that is step six completed. Now you probably notice I haven't put the photo etch here. There's a photo etch panel that's going to go over there. It's a grill. Um, and what I always do whenever I've got anything like this, I will paint in behind there black and paint the back of the photo etch panel black before I glue anything in. And that way it does look like a dead black hole, if you like. It looks to me like what they're portraying there is an engine engine area and um, obviously there's no engine detail or anything so we're getting is a black hole I'm gonna have to clamp this I think hold it in place doesn't want to play ball what am I doing And I think a couple of pegs on the top will help as well. Go on, fill your boots, have three. There we are. So there we are, we'll hold that together like that. And we'll let that dry. Right, turning the page now on to step seven. We've basically done everything. Uh, we've done all this, we've done all this. All this is done. We haven't obviously fitted those um, idlers or return rollers, should I say, uh, but everything else is done. So all this is done. And now the next thing is to glue the, the actual upper hull to the lower hull. Now, I can't do that obviously now because I've got all these clamps and everything on here. So um, I think we'll leave it there for part six. And I'm going to let all this go off. I'm going to have to deal with this seam here. I'll do some research and see if that's supposed to be there or not. I don't think it is. And then we'll um, and then we'll carry on from there. And what I'm going to have to do is get this glued onto the hull, and then think about getting all this black area painted. I think there's also some mesh that goes on the on the top as well here. We've got mesh here, so that is definitely the engine area there. So basically, uh, I want to paint all inside there, matte black. I might even do it before I glue the hull, the top on. Although I don't really need to because the um, because it's also open. There's holes everywhere. Um, so yeah, we'll let this go off, and then when we come back in part seven, we'll get all this glued together. And by then, I may well have dealt with that seam, um, or I may do it on part seven to show the uh, show the beginners how it's done. Okay, so thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in part seven. And um, Again, thanks for subscribing. We're heading towards the 6,000 now, which is wonderful. 
Uh, thanks for all the donations you've made to me on PayPal and Patreon. All very, very gratefully received. And as I say, it all goes into a pot. And we're going to buy a new camera and some lighting equipment and stuff and get this channel looking a bit more professional. Um, and that's really it. That's all I have to say for today. So uh, thanks for watching again and happy modelling. Bye for now.